Hello and welcome to Fireplace Stories, brought to you by the Own Sound and North Grey Union Public Library. I will be reading from the Georgian Bay Explorers Christmas, researched and written by Andrew Armitage, compiled and edited by Ross Kentner. Now get cozy, grab a warm drink and a blanket and let's sit by the fire. Owen Sound's First Christmas. Last autumn, when we were putting our garden down for the winter, we tilled up the stems and bowls of a number of clay pipes. Someone among the Veitch family who originally settled these acres was a heavy tobacco smoker. The white clay fragments reminded me of Owen Sound's first residence, Tom Rutherford and the Christmas story of his empty clay pipe. In 1840, Charles Rankin, the Queen's surveyor, John Telfer, the land agent, and two assistants, Tom Rutherford and Joseph Black, were the only non-native residents at the edge of a tamarack swamp on Owen Sound Bay. The party was in the Sydenham Valley mapping out a new community that one day would become Owen Sound. With the first snows of autumn, it was time for the survey party to return to civilization. But they had brought a large amount of equipment with them that was too valuable to be left unguarded. So it fell to Tom Rutherford to winter over until the first of the new settlers arrived the following May. An excellent axeman, Tom was assigned the task of clearing a town site over the long winter months. By November, he had built a stout cabin, stand today at the corner of 8th Street and 2nd Avenue East. In 1840, where furniture now sits in a store window, was a chinked cedar cabin with a mud mortar chimney. It was the scenic city's first building. There was much to get done that December, so Rutherford didn't think about his loneliness until he heard the cry of wild geese overhead. It was time to go and Tom was staying. Rutherford carved a calendar on the log wall. On a whim, he put up a few Christmas decorations, a sprig of cedar, a few scarlet rose hips, a bit of bright cloth left by a trader. With the candles lit, the cabin seemed homey. The surveyor's assistant was a civilized man and determined to celebrate Christmas. The day's feast would include wild goose, dried peaches and apricots, wild rice, and a pudding made of suet, raisins, and dark sugar. Tom Rutherford was satisfied that first Christmas night on the banks of the Sydenham, but not happy. If only he had some tobacco to smoke in his empty clay pipe. Tom liked to smoke after dinner, and he had long since exhausted his small supply. There wasn't much he could do but enjoy his frontier Christmas dinner and be early to bed. Now used to the silence of his forested shore, Tom's thoughts were interrupted by the sound of human company coming through the woods to the west. Tom opened the door to a half dozen members of the Nawash band of Ojibwe, returning from a hunt to their permanent camp in the valley. Silently, they followed him into the cabin. Sitting comfortably around the cabin walls, one pulled a twist of trade tobacco from a leather pouch. Offering it to Tom, he took out his own pipe and pulled a coal from the fire. In his old age, Tom Rutherford couldn't recollect what they talked about that Christmas night in 1840. It was mostly hand signs and a few common words, but the talk was friendly and Tom was grateful for the Christmas gift of tobacco.